Hi, my name is Ayrian Zucchelli, also known as the Brazilian Baroness, and I went to the Chicago Swahili. And this is what we're going to talk today. But before we get to the ball, we need to finish the dress. And since I will not have time to custom make a lace, I got this store-bought one and I was heavily inspired by these two images. Um, and this is what I went for and I'm happy that you guys also liked. This fabric is actually from Joann's. So they have the seasonal line and it's really, really, really convenient. Perfect for me. It's not a recreation of the period or period accurate, but Anyways, it's good enough for me, I don't have time, and I need to finish this dress in a week, so this is what we're doing. I also think this is not only convenient, but affordable. I only needed to buy the length of my skirt. Then I cut it and applied on specific areas that I wanted, mimicking House of Worth and House of Pacan. And like I said last time, John Bright Collection has a gown that is very similar. This fabric seems to have a combination of synthetic tool and cotton threads, so it did a combination of techniques, uh, cutting it all around, but also burning. Not gonna lie, this takes a long time. It is true that the dress would have a layer of this amazing net. Um, on top of all of the skirt and that is where the embroidery would be but I really <laughs> I really can't find this anywhere in town they only have like I don't know two sewing stores here and um, they don't have that so anything like this I would have to order online and it's not gonna get here on time so I'm deciding of uh, treating my lace embroidery as an applique and I am applying on the um, on the seams every seam of the skirt had a layer of lace applied but the back those are applied on the first wider pleat for the details on the shoulder I did fabric manipulation with two bands. I was between having very big puffy sleeves like some of them um, or also just go for a minimalistic look with just a little strip. I was really torn between so I went for something that wasn't that big but still had some flair. I also applied a layer of cotton lace and then finished everything with facing on the inside. You know what? Now that I'm thinking, I wasn't really feeling about showing armpits. I don't know, is it weird? I don't know, probably a weird thought, but this is how it looked so far, and I'm very pleased. The Worth gowns that I saw, they closed on the back, and they had a lacing bodice inside, and then the crisscrossed part um, held with um, eyelets. But I decided to do mine on the front, so it's easier for me to dress myself. So in this way, the front closure is not really like any of the work that I saw, but more really about House of Pecan or the John Bright collection and some other that we don't really know what is the maker. Personally, I enjoy dressing myself. I don't want to be a burden and I don't know, having to ask for help. Probably this is something that I should talk with my therapist. <laughs> but anyways, I feel more comfort comfortable if I dress in my house and I take my time and then I go to the venue. Perfect. The way that I want to see. I hate having to do any alterations in local. I absolutely hate. Nancy Bradfield observed in costume in detail that is interesting that the fashion of fastening bodice 
in front and skirt at the back is continued in Edwardian dress, even when later it is no longer made in two parts. I really recommend the book. It has great analysis of how the dresses work, the finishings, the closures. Everything is just really amazing and really detailed. And her styles of notes are kind of the way I do my own notes as well. So this is how I would start any dress. I would have plenty of observations and little notes for myself and for the client. I am definitely my worst critic and I also have anxiety. So I double check and triple check everything. So I don't have any wardrobe malfunction that is going to make me insecure. Not that other people care, but I care. And if I can do my best job ever to clients, I can also do my best job for myself as well because I am worth it. And if this dress is going to carry my name, if I die and become a ghost in this dress, it's better be worth it. It doesn't have to always be perfect, but it has to be the best I can do. Because I feel proud in challenging myself, even though this is a rush project, uh, still this is the best I can do in such a short time of period and turn out not bad at all. And this is it. This is my joy dress. Now, I think I'm gonna change it because I was wondering, do you think this needs a belt? This is why I didn't finish the bottom like I'm supposed to because I'm hoping to add a black piping or a black belt just because, I don't know, I feel like it kinda needs something something please let me know if i if this is like overkill is this necessary is it just me i feel like this is very necessary this is an alteration that needed to happen and now this is with the corset i know that some of you were a little bit worried is it gonna look okay with the corset uh, yes, because the way I padded the mannequin is mimicking my body with the corset. So, in theory, if you do it right, it's the same as if you had scanned the body to create the mannequin. There are a couple of um, businesses that do that professionally. And I guess if I had the money right now, I would totally try that. Uh, maybe hashtag sponsor me <laughs> as if but um <clears throat> but seriously if I had the chance to try that to scan my body and had it printed or had it done for me I definitely uh, would not be um, doing this because it does take a couple of hours so for this one it took me two hours because it's a temporary fix I can literally pull all of the the polyfill from it it's very easy but if i were doing one to stay and i will be doing one um it's just that i really don't have that many mannequins or space in my house i have already three mannequins and i want to buy maybe two more a male and a medium one and uh that's it <laughs> that's that's it that's that's a lot <laughs> So yeah, uh, this is how it looks like, and oh, but even though the corset has boning, I still have to put boning on the bodice. Uh, ideally, I would put boning on all of the seams that I did, um, minus these two here, probably just half boning one there. Um, but we'll see if I have time. I mean, I have to be realistic. Either I do more embellishment or boning, so we'll see. <laughs> now, a bit unorthodox, but I fit myself with the skirt <laughs> facing frontwards. And the trick here is to make it super, super, super tight. As tight as needed, that thing is not going to droop and fall anywhere. 
and if you are getting some wrinkles it's because it's not on the right spot this is the sweet spot and this is how I closure they have hooks and eyes and it's pretty easy really 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 simple I need to do a better finishing but again I don't have time <laughs> at least I can wear it <laughs> and this is the joy pointed bodice front and back is finished in a v-shape the section in front is sewn beneath the right side and invisibly attached with hooks and eye on the left while below, next to the hem, the overlap closes with a hook. And the pride of Balangandun is worn on the chest like a medal. The bodice is fitted with double bust dots, side pieces, side backs, and a curved center back seam. It is deeply pointed both back and front and curved high over the hips. Lace border the edges and overlaid in several areas, with only enough fullness for a graceful effect. The lace ruffles are topped with plain fabric to create a delightful effect. The whole dress is made in a joyous tone of yellow satin with contrasting modern lace, combined with a slightly sheer tulle or illusion net. According to the Delhi New Tour, September 1886, the richest and the simplest dress materials make up unbecoming in this way. And because of the temperature, I borrowed an elegant fur to wear. Might be odd, but this is also what a Brazilian lady would wear at the time. Good morning! It is the morning of the travel and guess who didn't finish her dress in time? Me. Uh, but I only have a few things to do. That is doing the applique, well actually finishing the waistband, doing the applique and the ham. Probably I'm gonna end up <laughs> finishing the ham at the hotel uh, like many of you <laughs> or at the car on the travel to go or maybe I'll just give it up and do by machine and then I'll fix it uh, post ad later <laughs> yeah that's it I, I had to work and the balls come second place <laughs> oh and also I was so stressed out this week that I never ever ever have a pimple but because I'm gonna travel and I'm going to go to this ball that is amazing I have several zits all over my face this is why I look like this <laughs> okay ready to pack this is how i'm transporting it the fur is inside i try to put everything i need inside of every package and let's go finish the baron suit hashtag panic sewing usually i don't finish dresses during a travel but this time it was impossible not to Oh my gosh, it seems like everything happened at the same week. So I spend most of the Saturday just indoor sewing. Also, if you think that I'm listening to relaxing songs, you're very wrong. I'm hyper. Done. <laughs> now let's go back to do my dress. More, yes, always more. These kind of dresses are super difficult to finish. Sewing by hand takes hours and hours, and this is why I brought my singer. And that's why I don't stop raving about these little guys. You put them in the trunk and they're ready to go. Now it's time to iron again this gown. And this is why starching makes such a difference. I barely needed to do anything. And now I have more time to do something on my face and try to hide all the big balls that I'm having. Hi! Three hours later. I decided to go vintage and I paired my limoncello diamonds with this old cut diamond French cross. More about it later, but now the back of the dress. Oh, my fur. <laughs> I love how my dress fits. It is so comfortable. 
If you guys want, I can release this pattern on my Etsy shop or you can just commission the dress with me. As you know, this dress is very important to me and it brought me so much joy to make it. And I wish it would bring you joy as well. And I don't represent my entire country, but I always try to bring a piece of Brazil with me. This I'm wearing as a medal is my Brazilian balangandão. And this is it, I'm ready to go. And this is a little footage at the ball. And according to modern etiquette, I don't wanna be too much on my phone, and I also don't wanna put my phone on people's faces and making it awkward and not experience the moment. But this is my way of bringing a little bit of this to you guys. I walked through the front door and I don't do back doors, sorry. I totally crashed into the party because the main entrance was this one at the back. I was also a little bit late. I did not mean to make a grand entrance, but turned out that was really awkward and this is what happened. But everybody's just amazing and nobody made a big deal of me crashing into the party. The place is just amazing and this specific detail transport me into a trend that I instantly thought about this worth dress. Is it weird? Is it just me that think about these little details? Anyways, everything was well thought. The ball was really well planned. There was also the program that was easily accessible to all. We also received all of the information on the email. It was amazing. I felt included and protected in this amazing, amazing party so many different people, so many, everything gorgeous. And nobody felt like a stranger, even though I didn't, I didn't know many people. Oh, this is the drawing room. They have a handkerchief, so... And as I'm taking in the information that there are mementos that I can take home, like this amazing dance card, and everything was so gorgeous, this strange, handsome gentleman interests me with champagne. Oh. I love the glasses too. It's amazing. <laughs> There was so much to see and do, it's impossible to show all, but this is a little bit of the bar. Bar was serving absinthe, champagne, different wines, punches, different cocktails, and pro tip, if you come into a bar in the US, bring cash for tips. This was all amazing. And the caterer explained to me that she was bringing many historical recipes to this party. It was amazing to see how much effort everybody put into their gowns, into the decoration, into the, recip the recipes of the food. Everything was amazing. And this is the absinthe uh, cocktail. Look at this. The spread is just incredible. And this is what I'll be consuming, yay! Oh, that's the cake! There was so many amazing people, but I needed a little bit of relaxation, so the Baron and I came downstairs with this amazing speakeasy. Oh, they were nervous, they were in shot. No, they're not. You're in my shot. And this is where I got the sitting down picture that some of y'all said that it looked like from a movie. No, it's the basement. It was so nice seeing old friends, meeting people that I only talk on the internet, and also fangirling about dresses. What a lovely cape! Can I take a picture of... of or a video of you putting it on.
Oh my god, that's lovely! And now we're getting to the end of the party. It's time to say our farewells, dance the last songs, and time to put our coats back on. Everything felt like a dream. And this is a proof that courses do not impede you for dancing. On the next video, we're going to talk about cleaning and making the gloves that I ran out of time. My name is Aidan Zucchelli. And I'll see you next time.